they, and they survived. A, a few people were killed, but not anywhere near like the others. And the other answer is, of course, the, the people say, yeah, yeah, look at all you uh, pacifists. Uh, Gandhi was assassinated. King was assassinated. Jesus was killed by the government. And, and that's true. In fact, if Jesus were around now, uh, the government uh, would find a capital offense for him. He'd be put in the, in the, in, in the, in the electric chair. So, instead of having churches with crucifixes over them, we'd have churches with, with a chair over us. Uh, uh, rather than the cross, you see a chair up there. Uh, and so, uh, so, of course, the pacifists are going to lose their lives. There's no guarantee it works. There's only a guarantee that it is more effective than violence. So, when someone says to me, a non-violence is a flop, I agree. But the worst flop is violence. And those are the only two options that we have. It takes a lot of study. I've been, I've been trying to study it for about 25, 30 years, teach it in schools, and, and, and I'm still learning more about it. There's still, there's still a lot of great uh, books, a lot of great literature written on it. So in order to drive out the evil, it's not enough to be against a nuclear freeze, it's not enough to blame the generals, it's not enough to blame Congress for sending more money to El Salvador for more weapons, it's not enough to condemn the CIA for funding the Contras, and uh, it's got to go beyond that, I think, uh, because, uh, because they are not fully to blame. You don't blame a pig for grunting. Uh, 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 you blame the farmer for calling it music, and I, I think a lot of us really, uh, really have to have to begin to organize ourselves if we believe in this, uh, to uh, to start to teach it and spread the word that way. It can't it can't uh, grow uh, just by uh, 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 protesting? As protesting is very good, but it's not enough. Uh, uh, we have to become almost. Almost acculturated, uh, but to nonviolence. As much as the Catholic bishops wrote a beautiful uh, a pastoral letter, I don't think I was disappointed by it, frankly, because there wasn't uh, much in there about 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 uh, getting uh, the ROTC programs off of off of Catholic campuses, for example. There was nothing in there about about Catholic colleges uh, refusing defense contracts for research uh, from the Pentagon. Uh, there was nothing in there about, about the question of, of the church uh, supplying chaplains to the military. Uh, so it was really, and there was nothing in there against conventional war. Uh, uh, there, was, uh, uh, there was no uh, condemnation of conventional wars. When, uh, since 1945, there have been 35 million people, mostly poor people, fighting other poor people in wars uh, since uh, since 45. There are now, I think, I think 33, 34 countries at war with each other, and these are conventional wars. They're using weapons supplied by this government, the Soviet government, France, uh, the biggest arms seller in the world. Uh, has a warehouse in Alexandria, Virginia, where the arms are supplied there. He's a good Christian boy, went to Sidwell Friends, a nice Quaker school uh, in Washington. And, 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 and he just, I, I interviewed him once, and he said, hey, hey, don't get on your moral high horse with me. I'm just doing what the government does. They sell arms. I'm just, I'm just a nice private entrepreneur. I'm making a buck off of it. And, and uh, it's true that the government, our government, uh, has increased its share of, of arms sales in the past uh, uh, three years from 31% to 39%. Uh, the Soviets have decreased their share. Uh, uh, our, our increase in, in weapons uh, procurement which is really the, uh, the nub uh, way of measuring what Reagan is up to, uh, uh, has increased 93% in the last three years, uh, the buying of new weapons. Uh, so, uh, so there's a lot of, 
of, of areas where we can begin to uh, to uh, to become uh, to become uh, refuse uh, to adjust uh, big ways small ways but each one decide but we can't really be effective unless we have studied it uh, 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 take uh, take a year time of study to read the literature and learn about it so that we can at least be grounded it just isn't it just shouldn't be a yearning of the heart a piece it's got to it's got to be a, a, a an effort of the mind and if we don't read the literature and know what's said we're going to soon be helpless about it it's not enough to be dreamers and all oh, oh, oh we want to have peace and and pray for it our prayers are fine but learning also has to be behind it so those are a, a few ideas I have uh, about, about, about how we ought to be effective, how we ought to, ought to refuse to adjust, uh, how we ought to, ought to develop a, a, an effective uh, form of social uh, a protest of keeping our hearts and souls alive uh, uh, through, uh, through prayer, uh, service, and exorcism. And throughout all of this, I think I think we really have to also keep one final thing in mind. It's hard for Americans to do, uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I try to keep it as a personal motto, even. Uh, and that is is uh, uh, don't uh, be successful, uh, uh, just be faithful. And 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 I think that all of us have to think that way. We come from a success-oriented society. And, and and we want to get ahead in all these awful things that we uh, get our coronaries over and ulcers and so forth. Yeah, uh, don't be successful, or just be faithful. And I think if we keep that as an ideal, at least we will uh, feel a summit peace with our hearts. Um, our life is 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 a gift uh, long before it's a right. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, those are a few thoughts I have. If there are any any questions or anybody has a point they'd like to share with uh, with the brothers and sisters, we could we could take that now. If anybody, uh, yes, sir. Great question about homelessness. A few months ago, the government was saying people around the Washington Mall were homeless because of choice. Your observation: Do you agree with that first? Well, and what is your position? Well, that was that was. Uh, my commander in chief Reagan's observation, as you remember, uh, 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 I've I've been working among the homeless for about oh I don't know ten years as a journalist. I went to live in the streets of Chicago uh, two winters ago for four or five days to see what it was like. Uh, I uh, I've yet to find anybody yet who says I like to be out here. Uh, 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 and I went to Chicago, I put on some old clothes, let my beard grow a little bit, and I lived as a, what they call a bum. And in fact, my wife said it didn't take much for me to look like one, to dress down. Uh, uh, and, and I learned quite a lot from that experience. Uh, I learned, uh, number one, that people have two ways of looking at the homeless. I'd be walking along, and I, I'd notice there was one type of, of person who would uh, who would who would look at me and their eyes would kind of uh, turn away. They didn't want to have eye contact as though, as though they were kind of a little bit uneasy and after all, uh, they knew it didn't take much to fall down, uh, to be homeless, to be out there in the streets. Many of those in the shelters six months ago, three months ago, were, had jobs, had families, Somebody got sick. They got uh, laid off by the uh, by the company. Yeah, the steel workers, the copper workers, the uh, the John Deere workers, perhaps, uh, are being laid off. Someone gets sick. There's a divorce. Uh, they lose their job, and they're on the streets. Uh, and uh, the other group of of people would give you a good look, and they would stare right at you. How could you let yourself go? And they gave a very judgmental look. I said those are the two types uh, of reactions I found out there. I remember doing a story once. I I visited all the all the shelters in Washington for homeless women, and I made the rounds and and talked to as as many folks as I could. At one shelter I went to, I was I was leaving, and suddenly my eyes caught uh, caught 
a, a glance of a woman sitting in the corner. I said, my gosh, she looks familiar. And I went over and said hello. And a year ago, she was a secretary in the newsroom where I work. She was, uh, she was married then, had a job. Uh, and she fell upon some hard times. Her husband left, uh, married a younger woman, and she had no house. Uh, she got a little mentally ill, heard voices. Can't have any voices being heard in the newsroom, of course, so we had to let her go. And, uh, uh, and boom, she's out in the street. She lives under bushes and rainstorms and, has, uh, and is slowly gone mad. And, and there she was. And so uh, she didn't really want to be out there. I never heard anybody. That was just a callous, another crude remark. From these, uh, from these incompetent, insensitive people uh, who are now in control of the government. Mises is another one, remember? He said, he said, of course these bums go to the soup kitchen. The food is free there. Uh, so we've had a lot of that. And, and it, 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 it angers me very much, and, and I hope it angers you too. Yes? Sure. Maybe this is sure. It's a common, it's a minor one. It's not a violent past, it's not a violent past. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you know that. that sure. Maybe the audience needs that clarification. Sure. Sure. Uh, do, you, do you want to tell us? Uh, 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 it's impossible uh, to believe in, in non violence as, as a tactic and, in fact, it's a way of life that yeah. doesn't. Yeah, I yeah yeah I know there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of I know shops work very well and I always thought that nonviolence was kind of was kind of the activism and pacifism was the theory. So all of us have different ideas of how it works, but uh, sure, sure I I understand. Sure. The question I have: If if believe that Sure, sure, sure. Are you mean, uh, in other words, we ought to have uh, the way we draft uh, people, you ought to draft them in the Peace Corps and Vista? No, that's coercive. That's using violence. The draft is like. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think we ought to force people to serve. Of course not. It's, it's not service then. It's something else. But I think. Sure. Oh, it's a very tough thing. I, I know that uh, that's the reason is, as a young fellow who introduced me before said I didn't vote. And, 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 and the reason I don't vote is, is because I, don't, I want to do as little as I can to cooperate with a violent government. And as soon as you vote, it says, I approve of this system of violence. And I know that's a little bit overdrawn and so forth, but... Uh, I think if you follow it through, uh, logically, you've got to come to that. We have uh, 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 the last candidate I really got enthused about was uh, David McReynolds, who ran as a socialist in 1980. He was on, I guess, eight or nine uh, states had him on it. He was of the same party. No one knew who McReynolds was until you said, he's of the same party as Norman Thomas. Ah, yes, Norman, uh, what a great man he was. He was declared, when he ran for president on those six uh, wonderful occasions, a, a loony. He was, he was the madman. He wanted such crazy ideas, I think, a 48-hour work week, uh, that the corporations, I mean, so this is crazy. Uh, and that's a 40-hour work week. Uh, my union has a 37-hour work week. And so, uh, but the idea is that, I think Norman, Thomas was saying about that, unemployment insurance, low-cost housing, a whole list of them are now being advanced by, by McReynolds, who wants disarmament, and these things, which I'm sure future generations will be accepting as normal and healthy. Um, uh, so I agree with what you say, that we can't 
force. Uh, people serve. It's really the opposite of what's happening now. The Supreme Court recently ruled six to two that um, uh, I cannot apply for student aid at the college and be a conscientious objector against the draft registration. I met a young fellow sitting over there in the corner who can't get into college now because he has not enough uh, funds to apply. He can't get a loan, and he can't get a loan because of the Solomon Act. Uh, that's the new law I passed Congress that you can't get a loan if you don't sign for the draft. Uh, so, in other words, the poor kids get it again. Uh, the rich kids don't need to get a loan. It doesn't matter what they do. Uh, so, uh, so those things are accurate. Yes. Oh, oh, I don't know. I think after we were, uh, quote, uh, humiliated by the Ayatollah, we needed to win one. And so we picked the weakest country in the cabinet, uh, and, and through all the great uh, military might we had down there. And, of course, we couldn't shoot straight. So we bombed a mental hospital. Fifteen crazy people died. You never hear about that, but, uh, but the Marines were tough guys, and, uh, oh, I think it was a cynical. Uh, immoral venture, just a cheap trick, really. Oh, I know. Buy a little book of Gandhi and give it to him. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Uh, Merton. Merton wrote beautiful stuff. And Dorothy, uh, you know all those books. And give them a reading list. They go all the way. Uh, that's what. Uh, that's what I do. I. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Sure. Troops there and why in the world they were there. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, what do you think about Mr. Mondale's change of heart? What that might mean for the campaign? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. As, as a non-voter, I don't think I'd be. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, I don't know. You decide that one. I think. I think all of us. All of us know that. Uh, uh, but Jesse Jackson was the only candidate who, who called for a decrease in defense. Uh, not defense. Pardon me. Uh, it's not defense spending. It's war. Uh, the preparation spending. Let's get the words right. I keep using that the word a defense as though it's the right word, it's the wrong word. It's, it's war uh, a readiness that we're talking about. And even just I was disappointed by him. Here he was, here he was, claiming to be the chief, a disciple of King, who, ta who taught nonviolence. And, and Jesse would always, well, I'm against the NX, and I'm against uh, the B1, I'm against the Grenade, I'm against this. But we need a strong defense. And he'd always end up with that line to make sure you knew he wasn't a madman. Uh, I'm safe. I believe in a strong defense. I want to kill people otherwise. And, and so when you get a guy like Jackson, he's forced to compromise like that. And I'm not, I'm not issuing any, any moral judgments about it. Then when uh, someone like Mondale, who was unschooled, uh, and that, of course he's going to uh, bend like a reed in the wind. And we shouldn't be surprised about it. Yes, sir. In line with your comments about not spending on the corporate, not spending on the corporate, not spending on the corporate. Yes, that's a good one. I am hoping I am one of, of four, of four abettors in my family, and I'm the only one still selling out to the government. And my brothers remind me of that constantly. Uh, and I hope to get into tax resistance. Uh, when my uh, kids are a little older, my wife. Uh, you can imagine what she says about it. Uh, uh, <laughs> she's a little white, like most people are. Oh, are we going to go to jail? What's going to happen to the, the kids and me? And, and uh, so, uh, so I don't know what I know. I've argued this out with Phil and uh, Harrigan and McAllister, and, and they say you got to do it now. You can't. You can't. You can't worry about whether your kids are going to come see you in jail. you got to do it for your kids and, and make that protest. The, the other argument is, is that I had this commitment to my family. I see them through and until the, 
the boys are out of the nest, and then I can, I can free to do my high wire act and you know, somersault in the air. And if I have the ground, I go by myself. I don't take them with me. Uh, so, so I, I'm only 46. Listen, I've given up. I don't, I don't have any meat. I don't own a car. I run out of thons. I, um, see what else am I doing? And, uh, so I got another plate right now. I'm going to get to tax resistance. I got a time yet. And, uh, no, 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 go ahead. No, no, I'm a hypocrite. Oh, yeah, well, I take that to heart because I know I should do more. I should, uh, I have a brother who hasn't paid a nickel to the IRS in eight years. And he's he's very artful about it. He signed over his property to his aunt and he had money in my name and and uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of money in being a pacifist and <laughs> I was Gandhi's line. It, it, it cost a lot of money to keep me poor, remember he said that? And yeah. <laughs> uh I think it's a great idea. I, I, I admire those folks who do it. I've written about them. I applaud them. I remember I was out. I was out in, in, in I guess, in Oregon. I'm getting a talk with it. Uh, yeah, there are about 25 Catholic bishops there. And, and Archbishop Hunthausen. Dutch, they call him Dutch Hunthausen. When the bishops get together, they call him uh, uh, Dutch. So he's in the audience. And, and, and there are a lot of... A lot of Hawkish Yeah, and I said I admired I admired Archbishop Hunter's tax protest very much. In, in fact, uh, uh, I uh, uh, I said that uh, that uh, that um, uh, there's a good chance he might go to jail. Right? And and after I'm all through this, other so old bishop comes up and he said he said he said the only thing I agree with you that Hunter's ought to be in jail too. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, even the, even the actually, purist uh, thought he, uh, he he didn't go far enough. He only fell fifty percent. And and and, and, and uh, no group that argues more than the pacifist but is the best technique. They get very violent arguments. <laughs> and, and and I like the school. Listen, if you're going to go fifty, you can go all the way because the government. It's going to take the war money out of that 50% and cut them off altogether. And that's how, uh, uh, that's how my brother did. And he's learned that's 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 that the IRS really, really, really comes after. There's been, since 1950, only four or five people have, have been in prison for conscientious tax resistance. Very few. And the reason they don't come is because a lot of it is peer group a pressure. They're sitting around. We're going to go and get for tax evasion. No tax evasion. And, and, and no one's going to rise in the IRS going after Archbishop Hunter. I'm knocking, uh, putting a bishop in jail. Uh, you don't get a career that way. Uh, but there was a priest down at Bishop Sullivan Diocese in Virginia. He owed about, about $125. And one guy was going to get the guy. And he went after the In a year's time, I forget the exact thing, but... It cost the government about twenty-five thousand dollars to get that thing. Twenty-five, and there were big headlines about how absurd it all was. So there's peer group stuff going on among the agents. They don't want to be made fools of. They want to get a nice rise in their job. So go after the big, uh, the big guys, the doctors and lawyers who are evading taxes in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and doing it fraudulently. There's no fraud in violence. Well, Nick's doing it. We, uh, we brag about it. We write uh, uh, press releases when we do it. <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, uh, I started writing columns about tax protests. You know, every, every March I get a bus stack of dollars from folks. Oh, write a column about me, will you? About my tax protests. <laughs> uh, that's all I could do. Oh, well, you got to. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, all the ones that are not violent. Uh, and don't you think you can when you advocate non-violent? Oh, no, 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 I'm advocating non, uh, not non-taxing. I'm advocating that I like a, a non-violent government. And if you want to feed people, uh, I, I'll be glad to cry. But uh, until we're spending and wasting money on killing people, uh, I've got, I've got to say, uh, pardon me about it, and, and 
I'm not going to give the money in a couple of years. I still for it, but uh, so I think uh, I see I see the product, and it's a very good one. Of course, you have to have to think about the good program, the good thing that the government does. But as the doctors uh, take the oath of office, uh, first of all, uh, no harm. And it ought to be that way for governments too. First of all, uh, uh, do no harm. And, and uh, I think uh, you can argue it both ways. I think you can. Yes, sir? I'm interested in an article that came out about a few weeks ago that uh, since the regulations came out for food stamps that the, uh, the number of claiming food stamps has gone down 10 percent every day the month of July. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear your comment about that. What was that question again, sir? The question has to do with new regulations that the government has brought out yeah. regarding uh, qualifications. Yeah. For yeah. Uh, things are quite a bit more complicated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you made a comment about the reads sometimes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I think, I think there is. Uh, there is a general a tightening up. I'm not familiar with that exact regulation, so I don't know the specifics of it, but uh, uh, um, I know that there are a lot of a lot of families that uh, I was talking to somebody over in Dubuque about that yesterday, and there was somebody who still had a job and was working for John Deere, and, and even with their salary, I think they had a lot of like six or seven kids, they even qualified for test stamps, even even while getting a salary. So there's so much confusion. A state is a lot of difference between Mississippi, eligibility, and New York State. And so uh, uh, there used to be a Senate uh, committee on it, and they monitored that, but that's not around anymore. They're getting up a new uh, committee in the house, I think. So uh, it's, it's one more uh, a shot on the poor, I think, that we're seeing from this. Administration right now that there are people being denied uh, who have a right to food. Uh, uh, something I was in the South Bronx uh, three or four weeks ago, which is the best uh, congressional adult in the country, and and I interviewed a lot of families and talked with the congressman. He me around and 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 I and he told me that it's six years. Uh, they're just getting money, low-cost housing in the South Bronx that was uh, legislated six years ago by Congress and signed into law. It's taken six years between the time where the money was authorized and appropriated until suddenly it's a key in his hand to open up a, a housing unit. Meanwhile, six years, of course, he's had his food stamps uh, decreased. Uh, uh, he's lost his lost job. And, and and now we can't afford that. A uh, point. So, so we're saying that there's a six-year lead time, even in these programs. And that, I think, is the real, is the real uh, horror and outrage of what's going on. All right. Maybe two times. Uh, 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 a, uh, a curtain call? Yes, thank you. Well, well, I. I know. Uh, oh, I don't know. No, that's not a friend of mine, and, and I'm very sad. And what's happened to him? Uh, uh, I don't anything he's done for anything like a principal. It's only money. He's a nice job with the right wing think tank, and they call him a scholar, and it's all that. So then. And we're still very close friends, uh, uh, and I see him a lot. And, uh, uh, the economic, I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid I'm not getting hooks up for it. I'm afraid uh, as long as the church accepts uh, the benefits from the government, as we do, as the church does accept, uh, we accept tax exemptions for our property. As long as Caesar is being so nice, that's, that's going to be hard to, uh, to get a good whack that he deserves. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about all, all the tax uh, problems of the church. But I know there's no separation between church and state. We collaborate with them. We give them chaplains. We have yeah, defense contracts. And, and until, until we really separate ourselves from Caesar, 
there's going to be more strong or harsh criticism about it. And economics is where it has to be. I still love that lovely, strong, angry, and sick Paul VI. Uh, as popular and has progresso, I think, in 1968. There's big strong language in there about about emphasis of both a capital and socialism. I think I think it needs to be reinforced. And what the American bishops are going to say, uh, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to get a little bit of this on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, Harry Truman, they used to bring him in the accounts. And, and they would uh, call Mr. President on the one hand, and then on the other hand, and will finally exploded one day. Uh, will someone uh, please bring in any economist with just one hand? Uh, uh, <laughs> I hope to be. I'm saying, I'm saying my old-fashioned Nevada, a nice, good, strong one with a lot of anger. And you know, I was disappointed by the last one on wars. Uh, it it did not condemn conventional wars, uh, so I, uh, I don't know. I, I know. Uh, I know. Any good, strong bishops and the Bishop Dingman right behind you, certain knows, and Bishop Sullivan and our Bishop Townsend. And they are often isolated in the ranks. And, uh, but we'll see. I had a column about it, I'm sure. And uh, uh, so I'm going uh, <laughs> to... I will take one question and... Well, maybe two more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I come on the time. I might as well finish up. But yeah. we'll take one more. They'll take two more. Yes, sir. You said more will see what all will gain for what it is. What is the four world gang? Oh, I think uh, I think a typical uh, sanctimonious uh, opportunist, and and uh, there's nothing. Uh, uh, I'm not too alarmed. But I'm an absolutist about free speech. Anybody ought to be allowed to say anything about anybody, and as soon as you impose libel laws, uh, in trouble. Uh, now I know I'm on uh, the fringes on that issue. I tell my colleagues who say, "Well, you have to." Impose some restrictions, but if I want to speak out, let them do it. Let the market ears decide. And we're smart enough. I think we're smart enough to to know who the are uh, and who the two voices of, of justice might be. And, and I don't really worry about them too much. Uh, uh, I know it's easy for me that I'm not really going to be victimized by, by some of the uh, some of the programs that he might get through. through. Uh, so I realize that I think I think if we do have if we care about free speech, you have to let these people speak out, and it gets tricky because they have a lot of money to buy airtime and voice, whereas the other people, the people like Nader, doesn't have that kind of someone like Nader or the Berrigans, they can't have time. So it's always going to be unfair. But I'd rather have the unfairness and have the have the worst aside uh, that someone decides who. Yes, sir. I was reminded of um, the presence of Bishop Bingham. Just the other day, he uh, he get on a topic that he's uh, in the morning, and that is the uh, issue of land use and planning. Wondering if you've addressed this recently. Well, I've been I've been I've been on about land use for years. I guess you have to. Appalachia, the same corporations coming down there. The next, I was just up to northern Michigan. Well, yeah, uh, there are economic grounds. Uh, families leaving their homes, never coming back. Houses were selling up there for fifty thousand. One real estate broker told me five thousand dollars. People from the east are sending out checks to real estate agencies just to four thousand dollars to buy unseen. Just as a sign uh, uh, near the river, or whatever it is, and it's not kind of ghost town. The land has been has been uh, timbered out, and and really the people are again. Uh, we don't. I know. I have problems immense. And we don't hear about too much land use. Is not a big Washington. Uh, uh, so if you start to strip my rock creek, uh, <laughs> uh, a pipe would be. I guarantee you that. Why can't this drive into work every morning? I it would be. Uh, but most of uh, uh, we are unsophisticated about it. We don't know what's going on here. I love to come out and write columns about, about the land use issues, and I admire Bishop Dean very much. I wish the Catholics have a, a reverence for the land. Uh, uh, Thomas Nader, a beautiful essay. You might look it up about, about how Americans adopted the subjugate the earth. 
philosophy. And Christian churches have not really too much to, but to counter that. How out, out, out in Missoula, West, uh, Mike has written a new book. It's what he, he kind of adopted the new uh, earth keeping. And we have to have earth keepers. Yeah, I forget the name of it. And uh, um, so I think that uh, that the church, uh, Bishop Dingman is probably very much alone. That's when we'll humor him. He's not facing frontwards or backwards. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and we see seminarians come in. And they want to study theology, and they study the tongue, and they know the difference between the earth and the earth, that argument, and the letters are in business school, and hard economics, they ought to learn farming economics, and learn economics, and if you will keep working on that, and he'll be leading us, and God is here. I thank you for coming, you're a good audience, I'm talking about the towns, I, I think any part of the country, Sometimes it's tough to come to Oscar and bring back a column. But listen, and I really had a nice feeling. And, and contrary to what we're hearing, I, I was in Haiti. I'll just finish up. Haiti recently, the poorest country in the world. Average the salary there. Eighty percent of that jobs make uh, two dollars a day. Yeah, I went to the baseball the other day, sewing. Gregor in their heads as they sow these base the poorest country in the world <laughs> making uh, uh, things. It was extremely uh, the slum Simone. 100,000 people cardboard hovels uh, 100,000 Haitians some Peace Corps volunteers <laughs> for the first time yeah, since Peace Corps began in the early 60s Haiti. A lot of those were cut, and so I think the idealism is something that people we need to develop it. And I know here, here, here at college, the students are today at Loris College in Dubuque. Altruism is alive, and they are thinking of service, and, 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 and thoughts, and, and I did. So, uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, don't be successful. <laughs> Just one more thing I forgot to say with the beautiful uh, Spanish or Holly Buckley, a well known family here. I think it's always from Ames. And she likes the diving uh, forces. But anyway.